Tuscany is a beautiful, amazing landscape where we have so many varieties of trees and shade of green, beautiful hills and houses, amazing food and outstanding wine. We are warm, welcoming, hard-working people living in a little paradise in Italy. San Gimignano is located right in the heart of Tuscany. It's a beautiful medieval town with 13 towers, and for this reason, it's called the medieval Manhattan. You can definitely spend time walking and appreciating all the history and culture the town has to offer. Just outside San Gimignano, you will find Fattoria Poggio Alloro, a real 100% organic working farm and a family business. More than 60 years ago, the three Fioronis brothers, Umberto, Bernardo and my father Amico, came to San Gimignano to seek the new opportunities as sharecroppers. Today, three generations of our family still work on this farm and call it our home. Our home is situated in the middle of thousands of olive trees, vineyard and fields. It's a place where you can taste quality, organic food. Very simple, very honest, farm to table fresh. Even though they are now in their 80s, the Fioroni's brothers can still be found working on the farm, enjoying their passions. My father Amico takes care of his wonderful vegetable garden, and he raised chickens, pigs, and rabbits. Umberto used to take care of the Chianina cows every single day. Now he's getting a little older, so Bernardo, who works in the fields and vineyard, helps him. The Chianina cows that we raise are one of the largest and oldest cattle breeds in the world. Their massive bone structure makes them very strong, so farmers use them for centuries as a working cows to plow their fields before tractors came along. Even if we use our cattle for food, that doesn't mean we don't respect or love them. My uncle Bernardo, he knew every one of them and he named them. Sometimes he named Margarita, Daisy, or Luna, Moon, or Trouble, <laughs> when they're a troublemaker. Working at the farm is a very beautiful life, but at the same time, it's a hard life too. It's full of sacrifice. We always have to be on the farm to take care of the animals and many other daily chores. But it's definitely a life full of satisfaction. Anything you grow for a season or for a full year, it gives you something back. It's an amazing way to work. We are a self-sustaining farm. In addition to the wine, we produce extra virgin olive oil, saffron, pasta, different type of grains, vegetable, fruits, we even have the bees for the honey production, chicken, rabbits and pigs, and of course the canina cows. When we talk about organic, that means we don't use any pesticide or chemical compost in the vineyard or on the plants. So everything is natural. The fresh products from the farm, they have everything inside. They have the taste of the nature. They're crunchy, juicy, sweet or bitter, it doesn't matter. They are delicious. Because we don't use pesticide, you might be wondering how we keep insects away from our vegetables. Well, the truth is that we don't. But that's okay, because insects can sometimes be a good thing. If you see a few bite marks on your fruits and vegetables, it means you are free of any toxins. So if it's good for bugs to eat, it's good for you too. Questa vedi questo pomodoro è bellissimo. Però se noi lo giriamo, lui ha avuto una puntura di una cimice e ha, fa, ha provocato questo. Però se lo tagliamo a metà, la parte la parte sotto è buona da mangiare. The only time we are worried about bugs is if they attack the roots. Gli insetti non fanno tanto danno, però c'è un fatto molto importante quando attacca la radice, eh, che viene recisa in questo punto, 
La biondina è costretta a morire. Boh. One of the most important ingredients in Italian cooking is tomatoes. We start our harvest around July. We have several different varieties of tomato. Some are great with salad or just on bread. Other we harvest to make our tomato sauce. My father used to call this brutti ma buoni, the beauty and the beast. I see only the beauty. Mwah. When we harvest tomatoes at the farm is two full months, July and August. That's when we have the most tomato in our garden. We harvest daily and let them rest under the sun so that they mature and became red and juicy. And then there will be a family reunion. Everybody helps with the tomato bottling. We sit all day long washing and peeling the tomatoes and squeezing them for their juice. We then make the sauce and bottle it so we can use all year long. Fattoria Poggia Loro may be in the heart of Tuscany, but there is also a little piece of Texas here too. Russell, my father assistant, came to our farm from San Antonio, Texas. When I moved here, I didn't speak a word of Italian. Maybe ciao, and I, because I saw it on a movie. Uh, the first year I was really very, very quiet here. Uh, I tried to learn by watching and try to think about what they needed uh, through um, deductive reasoning. Through that, I was able to figure out what they would need next and then help them out even without the language. Working on the farm is very difficult and the days are long and hot but there's also, there's not a stress like uh, a punching a clock, getting it, it's not like that. You're not just working like a dog. You're working like a dog and then living like a king and then back to digging holes like a dog. One of the most important things in our culture is definitely our time at the table. That's when the family and the rest of the other workers come together to enjoy the other's company over a good meal and a good bottle of wine. A quick lunch to us is two full hours. We start work very early in the morning, so it's a nice break. It's a time to rest, get energy back, enjoy each other's company, and then we go back to work. The question that I've been asked the most is how we can get along. Three families together, all the cousins, three generations, about 15 of us working together. The secret is that we work hard all day long and the only time we see each other is only for lunch or dinner. And that's the last thing that we want to argue. We just wanted to enjoy our plate of food and a glass of wine. On the farm, we have fresh eggs from our chicken, durum wheat semolina, and all-purpose flour. You know what that means? Homemade fresh pasta. The secret to make a very delicious homemade fresh pasta is to follow my Mama Rosa recipe. Let me show you how she taught me. To begin, take two full hands of the all-purpose flour, and then two full hands of the semolina flour, and blend together. After that, create a mountain and then a volcano. We need to make sure that we have enough space in our volcano for at least two eggs. First egg and the second. Here we are, we get our fork and we start to beat the eggs in this way. I will try to protect my volcano with the other hand. So little by little, every time that I'm moving the fork, I'm adding more flour to the eggs and the eggs are getting little by little more thicker. So after a while you're working your eggs, your arm might get tired. So that's the time to blend the eggs in this way. And the eggs are not running anymore. They stay all in the volcano. 
and now it's really impossible to work the eggs. I cannot do this anymore with the fork. So it will be the time and go ahead with our finger. So with my finger, I'm doing first a little pressure, a soft, gentle pressure, and I roll the eggs on the cutting board. How we know when the dough is ready? Well, open a little bit your dough inside and touch it with the palm of your hand and see how sticky it is, it's like glue, so it's not ready at all. We have to add more flour and keep working our dough for a few extra minutes. A little bit of pressure and you're rolling on your board and you're folding back, always having the flour underneath. And here we are, the dough is ready. And here we are starting to work with the rolling pin, in Italian, mattarello. The way that I'm working with the rolling pin is rolling the dough back and forth and then I do a little rotation and I roll again back and forth, back and forth. So what I love to watch from my mom and my aunt when they're doing the pasta is a little trick that they're using to make the pasta even more thin and is to roll and to fold the pasta around the rolling pin and move your hands in this way from the center to the edge of the rolling pin. You're helping to make your pasta a little bit thinner. And then we're doing this. Okay, when your pasta is very, very thin, really like paper thin, then is the time when your pasta is ready. Just sprinkle your pasta with a little bit of flour. And you fold your pasta in this way. Let's cut our pasta. So with your knife, you cut very thin slices of pasta, and those will be tagliolini, or also known as noodles. One, two, three, tagliolini. And now our second pasta, very, very typical in Tuscany. Those are the pappardelle, very, very thick. Yeah. And then if you unfold your pasta, you put your stuffing, your favorite stuffing, ricotta cheese and spinach or meat or any type of stuffing that you like, you put it inside, you fold the layer of the pasta and you give a little pressure with your finger in this way. And then with our little friend, we are going to cut and make the ravioli. That's a classic shape, square, but you can definitely do also round or half a moon, like this. But let's say you're making your ravioli, for example, and you do realize that you don't have this home, this little friend, how you can make your ravioli. So we take our fork and we do a little bit of pressure with the fork. So in this way, we are sealing all our pasta and we are making this prettier. And see, ta-da, look at this. Now he's pretty too, like the other two, like his little friends. Every type of pasta we are making is still fresh pasta, so it's still humid and wet, so it needs to dry at least for a couple of hours. At Fattoria Poggia Loro, we produce many different types of food products, all 100% naturally organic. But there is one thing we don't make, bread. But that's okay, because we can always get fresh baked bread from Marco, the baker. Marco, the baker, is actually my cousin Renzo's friend from their school days. He owns a bakery in Olignano, and it's a very old bakery. People stop by all the time to buy his fresh, warm, crunchy bread and of course for a chat. Marco the baker, uh, Panayo, Panadero as we call him, the bread man, uh, is quite a character in these parts, uh, quite famous actually. And he is known from every family within, I would say, 20 kilometers of here. Uh, he stops at the farm, he drinks a glass of wine, he talks to him when somebody's born, he's the first person there. Uh, he is just, without Marco here, I think there would be a void, because I think every town should have a person like him.
When he's not in the bakery, Marco makes deliveries to the family and the farms in the area. In every place he delivers, there is always a glass of wine waiting for him. Of course, at the end of his delivery day, he's a little tipsy, but always happy. Let me show you some of my favorite recipe using Marco's bread. A quick, simple, amazing, tasty recipe we do in Tuscany is bruschetta. All you need is extra virgin olive oil, garlic, tomato and basil. So simple and so good. The bread salad, panzanella, is another wonderful summer dish. It's cold and fresh, so when it's really hot, this is the perfect meal. This is also coming from the poor tradition of the farmer, when they really had very few ingredients, but they still had the bread and few vegetables from their garden. To make a delicious panzanella salad, we soak the bread in the water, then we squeeze it like a sponge and crumble it. Then we mix cucumber, tomato, the red onion, and basil. Then we add our dressing, which is simple extra virgin olive oil and wine vinegar and salt. This is the most simple bread salad panzanella. It gives you a lot of water, a lot of fresh feeling, so in the hot summer in Tuscany, that's all you need. Every Saturday night for 25 years at the farm, we serve our famous Fiorentina T-bone steak, coming from the Chianina cow. My father is the master of the Fiorentina T-bone steak. It's a very, very large steak, and if you cook too much, it can become tough. How you will know when the steak is from a real Chianina cattle? First is the color, very pink. Poi, deve avere il grasso bianco lardo. Then the fat part, it needs to be very white. Deve avere l'osso centrale, forma, forma T. And of course, the bone in the middle has to be like a T. La bistecca chianina deve essere un, come minimo un chilo e cinque, un chilo otto. The tradition of the real chianina tibon steak, bistecca alla fiorentina, it's for the steak to be at least one kilogram and a half, one kilogram and eight. To prep the steak, we need to put the steak near to the fire to warm up. My father loves to cook the steak only a few minutes each side. It's very important to create a thin crust to lock all the juices in. One thing that my father does is let the steak sit upright on the bone. The bone will not burn and will transmit all the warm temperature to the rest of the meat. We cook always the Bistecca alla Fiorentina rare. It's a very big, giant cow. Because they are muscular, the meat is tough, so you don't want it to cook too much. In the butchery, we cure meat all winter long to have a delicious prosciutto and salami. In this way, we will have those for the rest of the year. The process to make a ham, prosciutto, is very, very long and difficult. It takes at least a total of 16 months of aging to be ready. To make the Tuscan salami, my father used a very secret recipe. He doesn't share the recipe with us. It's a mix and a blend of different types of spices and black pepper. The making of the prosciutto and all the other um, cured meats are, it's a, it's a work that to me is more of an art as well. Uh, it's easy to build something to make it beautiful, but when you take something and deconstruct it, to me, and that, to me that's a different type of art. We can take a whole pig, use absolutely every piece for something, something different. The respect that we give back to the animals by working and appreciating every piece is just shown every day with every slice. I think that uh, even if you were to come here, you would see the joy uh, and the pleasure and the respect that they have for a piece of salami. So it's really an amazing, amazing thing.
Here at the farm, we serve lunch and dinner to our guests using all the products coming from the farm. One of our favorite recipe is the beef sauce. Let me show you how to make it. The ingredients for this recipe are the celery from Amico's garden, fresh parsley, carrots, a couple of onions, garlic, extra virgin olive oil, conserva di pomodoro, tomato sauce, and ground beef. That's it. And now let's chop and mince all our ingredients. There is two way to chop the vegetable, chef style and mama style. So I want to show you with the knife, chef style. And this is mama style with the mezzaluna, the half moon. When you start to chop these ingredients and mince these ingredients, the smell that they're giving to you is incredible. Plus, is a very good workout. Means until the vegetables are very, very fine. I know this is a lot of work, so you can use a food processor, but be careful, don't overdo, otherwise you puree the vegetable. And this is not what we want. Once you have minced your fresh vegetables, Fry them until they're golden. And then chop some fresh tomato or use tomato sauce. I will use ours from the farm. So hard sometimes to get this tomato out of the bottle. They're all stuck inside. Now I'm separating the skin and the seeds from the tomato. I promise this sauce is to die for. Now that the vegetables are golden, we are going to add our ground beef. Look how lean it is. After you add the ground beef, don't forget to put the salt and the pepper. Stir your ground beef occasionally until it's browned. Then add your tomato sauce. Let the sauce boil for one hour until the liquid is reduced. When the sauce is ready, Transfer what you need to a shallow pan. Then bring a pot of water to a boil, add some salt and your homemade pasta. Make sure you only cook for three minutes. It's fresh pasta. We don't want it overcooked. Once the pasta is cooked, toast with your beef sauce. Easy and delicious. Salute! One of the most important products we have on the farm, which is also a winery, is definitely the wine. At the farm, we have 50 acres of vineyards where we grow a different variety of grapes. We produce every year 200,000 bottles of wine and we make 14 different labels in between white wine, rosé wine, sparkling wine, red wine, and then also sweet wine. We begin our harvest in September. The whole family is part of the process of picking grapes. Once they are picked, we take them to the winery and then we start the winemaking process. Putting the grapes in the diraspatrice, that is a machine that separates the stem from the grapes. Then the grapes will go in the pressing machine that will squeeze all the grapes. For the white wine, we only use the juice of the grapes. For the red wine, it's very important that the fermentation is done with the skin. That is how it gets its color. The fermentation process lasts from 10 to 15 days. After the fermentation process, the wine is going to age in the still tank or in the barrels. When our wine is ready, it's time to bottle the wine. The power of the bottling machine is for 1,600 bottles an hour. But do you think every day we bottle, everything goes smooth? The answer is no. So if you like to learn some bad Italian words, come there the day that my cousin are bottling and you can hear the most colorful bad words in Italian.
Here in Tuscany, the ingredients for a beautiful life are very simple. Good food, good wine, and good health. We are definitely not rich, but we consider ourselves wealthy. The most generous gift we can give each other is our time. San Gimignano and Tuscany are in the heart of Italy. We like to share our love for food and wine with everyone. So come to visit us. I'll see you soon. Arrivederci.